Reddit. What was your holy crap I'm witnessing history moment? The 2011 tsunami in Japan. At some point, they were just running live video with no commentary. It was horrifying. Watching people scramble for their lives. Everything just washing away in a slow, gray, unstoppable wall of water. I remember hearing about trains and ships that had washed away. Also heard of a volcanic eruption. It was like 2012. Being in social science class in 9th grade, watching the Challenger launch with Krista McAuliffe on board, and watching it explode. Berlin Wall coming down. Between that and Glasnost, I really thought the world was truly becoming a better place. Little did I know. The world was a better place for about a decade. I was away at a training camp and my friend mentioned they had heard about a shooting in my hometown. I turn on the news and see that 26 people from the elementary school I went to had been killed. I didn't really think about it as a holy crap I'm witnessing history until a little later but I definitely will never forget it. Watching the US network news feeds as it became clear that Trump was actually going to pull it off. To the palpable level of oh shitness in the studio was remarkable. Watching Florida turn light red. He might do it. Dark red. He's doing it. I was going to say 9-11 but I'm going to skip ahead a bit to 2003. I was about 16, alone sitting on the floor in one of the back bedrooms of my house watching the news. Bush's 48 hour ultimatum that he giving Saddam had ended and the troops were officially rolling into Iraq. Not too long after that the first US casualty of the war was reported. A marine if I remember correctly. I remember thinking crap. Our country is at war again? Don't think anyone thought it would last as long as it did. I was at college and remember the debates. I wasn't decidedly pro or against, but I also felt like the decision to go was way too rushed. I told this to a pro-war campaigner trying to hand me a sign that I was declining, and he called me a communist. A decade and a half later, I wonder what he thinks about Iraq. There've been many, obviously. But the first time I recognized the historic importance of an event was probably the release of Nelson Mandela and the end of apartheid. I came here to say this. I grew up a white kid in South Africa, and he was released when I was 15. But I knew at the time it was huge. 9-11. The first black president. The day after Osama bin Laden died and the speech President Obama gave. The Boston Marathon bombing. Thanks, Reddit. Donald Trump being president. Knowing that curiosity had landed on Mars, as a question mark 13 years old, I was like wow, this is quite the big achievement, and I thought that my science loving math teacher from the previous year must have been really excited at that piece of news. Just a night, watching Roger Federer and Rafa Nadal play each other in the Australian Open final, they will both very likely go down as the greatest players ever, and it might be the last final they play each other in. As an old guy I love seeing athletes in their 30s continue to dominate. Not just Roger and Rafa but the Williams sisters, Tom Brady, and Jeremy Jagger at 44. The Challenger Explosion. I was 5 yo, listening the launch on the radio with my dad. Heard the explosion. Spent the rest of the day watching replays and news speculation of what went wrong. Left a really big impression on me, and may have influenced my decision to go into engineering. Like a lot of people, I saw the explosion and immediately knew it was gone. And, I knew our space program would never be the same. Like a lot of people, 9-11. Prior to that, my generation never had one of those pivotal moments. The previous generation knew where they were during the Cuban Missile Crisis, or when JFK was assassinated, and so on. For the first half of my life, I had no such event. 9-11 happened when I was 22, a few days after I had moved into the dorm at UBC. I didn't catch it live, but I did catch the immediate aftermath. I still remember that day, and that at the time, there was the real possibility that as many as 50,000 people were killed. The number of people in the towers at any given time. It was freaking surreal. Now that I'm older, I also feel that way now. I know enough about history to realize that the rise of the far right and nationalism around the world, not just in the US, is going to have unpleasant consequences. I always assumed I wouldn't see a world war in my lifetime. Now, I'm not so sure who right now can predict what the future will bring in the next few decades. 
although I didn't fully realize some of these at the time. Growing up in the 60s and 70s there were several. JFK, RFK, and MLK assassinations, Moon Landing, Kent State, Beatlemania and Woodstock to name a few. We didn't start the fire, it was always burning since the world's been turning. Germans taking sledgehammers to the Berlin Wall. That above all else really made me want to leave the USA and go where people were really struggling for and appreciating freedom. Election night 2008. Driving home from work at SF General Hospital through the Mission District when a bomb won. The sheer joy and community of people in the streets. Coming together. Cheering. Honking. Rejoicing. It was amazing. Then the stark contrast of the dread and physical grief I, and everyone around me, felt on election day this year. Both times I knew that the day was historic, obviously for different reasons. In 2008 I heard gunshots coming from my neighbor's house because he was drunk and angry. In 2016 I heard gunshots from my neighbor's house because he was drunk and celebrating. City folks probably would have thought there was some kind of war going on with all the gunfire and explosions at 1.30 in the morning. Cobes 81. My dad and I stayed up watching it, I think it was a 10.30pm EST game and I remember being in complete disbelief. I have two eerily similar stories about history in the making moments recently. The first was Brexit. I had been a floating voter on the issue for a while, but in the last couple of weeks the ugly xenophobic side of the leave campaign was becoming more blatant, so in the end I felt strongly pro-remain. When they were doing the counting, I stayed up all night to see the results. It was announced at about 4.30am that leave now had so many votes that remain couldn't catch up, so without the final count being official. They could say that Britain had voted to leave. I thought our crap. But I was in a stupor at that point and quickly fell asleep. When I was asleep, I was sure I could still hear the TV running. And I heard the news announcer say that in an unbelievable turn of events. Every single undeclared borough had voted Remain and now Remain had won. I thought ah oh, thank god and didn't wake up from my dream for 3 hours. The second is when I stayed up to watch the US election results. Similar story, I was in and out of sleep when I heard the announcement in the early hours of the morning. As I fell asleep I could still hear the TV playing the reactions and victory parties, and I dreamt I was in the crowd as Trump came on stage. He got out a guitar and in a showboating way began to play American Pie, but he was making up the lyrics. The crowds were all cheering and I was looking around at the other people there thinking what, that's not how the song goes, but they were able to sing along to the new made up lyrics. It was frightening. And I say bye bye my American pride. Buried underneath a wall at least a hundred feet high. And them bad hombres were raping from the Mexican side. Singing this will be the day freedom dies. This will be the day freedom dies. I watched Keith trailer. Or 375 pound defensive tackle whose main attributes were being freaking gigantic and taking up space return and interception for 67 yards. Lehman Brothers, watching the analyst stomp shoulder slumped out into the street, knew it was only a fraction of what was about to come. I was in 5th grade during Columbine, I live quite near there, I got a bloody nose and went to the nurse. The nurse and the secretaries weren't even looking at me, they were all circled around a radio, which was talking about kids in trench coats, which my 10 year brain thought were raincoats, opening fire. My mom was taking me to her class with younger kids, and we listened to the radio while caught in traffic. She made me promise not to bring it up, because we didn't know if the younger kids parents had told them about it. The next day, we were going to the library and I remember that as the first time I ever questioned God. They were still reporting maybe 50 people dead. I couldn't understand why, if God was so powerful, he wouldn't save those kids. I was at a soccer tournament nearby within the week and my dad and I went to see the crosses that had been erected in the hill for each victim. I'll never, ever forget that moment. I just knew something important had changed, for the worse. I'm really stunned for all the things that have happened internationally since Trump became president. I'm pretty sure all of this will be in the next history books. I just hope it ends up in history books as this weird bump in the road where the world learned a bit more about itself. And not and that's how WW3 started. The first really big one that I actually understood while it was happening was the Berlin Wall coming down. 
If I was a couple of years older I'd have hopped on a plane so I could have been a part of it, but I remember watching it happen live on TV. It was amazing. And now we're talking about building one. I was in Chicago for the parade after the Cubs won the World Series. It was the largest gathering of people in United States history. 5 million people. Simply amazing. Same here. I have trouble conveying to my friends who weren't there exactly how crowded it was. I couldn't move an inch. Honestly, the current situation, the Muslim ban. I saw 9-11 but I was too young to comprehend it. Heard about the Paris attacks but not until 24 hours after. So it didn't impact me as much. I remember Trump saying he was gonna ban Muslims from the country and thought, that's horse crap, idiot. Then he took it back, started denying it, but he was actually elected, and he put in the executive order, and I've started seeing pictures of hundreds of lawyers sitting in airports trying to help their clients get home. I saw one and thought, this picture is going to be in a textbook one day. It was, and still is, confusing and surreal. I was on St. Paul's Square when Pope John Paul was shot in 1981. Pretty strange to be there. The gunman nearly ran over me as he was fleeing. Russia invading Crimea. I think that's something that I really haven't seen in the comments. But for me, it was a huge oh crap. I'm not that old. Not even 20 yet. So there hasn't been a time in my life that I specifically remember one country conquering land. It's something you're taught all of the time in history class throughout school. But I remember being glued to the TV screen and just watching it happen when news first broke. As someone who lives in a country that borders Ukraine that really fricked me up. I always thought that that period of history was done. When Obama got elected my nan said you can tell your children you were there when America had its first black president. I wasn't there, I was in Britain, but it's still pretty cool I guess. Back when I was in 5th grade, my parents suddenly passed away in a drunk driving incident. I had to move to a small town called Woodstock, Vermont to be with my only living relative, my uncle Ross. He was a bit of an eccentric type, often taking me and my dog George out to wacky restaurants all across New England. It became a tradition. Every time I had a long weekend off from school or sometimes just on a lazy weekday we would skip school and find somewhere new to eat. I had trouble making friends for a while, so Ross and George were my best friends. This was my life for the next 3 years. My uncle and dog and I would travel New England looking for a good bite to eat. I did football in high school, and naturally made some friends through that. After football was over, however, we started making some pretty bad decisions. It started with me accidentally taking too many of my meds for my stress, and quickly progressed to other things, like ketamine and M. I didn't think much of it. I would just take a hit and feel relaxed for a while. Eventually, I realized that my habits really had negative effects. I had to come to this conclusion when George had to be put down after I took him with me to a party and he got hit by a car. I still remember coming home to Ross, holding my bleeding dog and crying for hours and hours. Ross was more affected than I was by this, and we started to change our lifestyles drastically. We moved to Texas, after Ross got a job offer and we figured it was time for a new start anyway. While we lived in Texas, we took a new leap into our lives and I started sobering up. Everything was looking good, until one day, while I was at home with Ross, we had to pack up and leave immediately. There was a fire bigger than any we had ever seen, and it was time to evacuate the area. It turns out that this wildfire would be the deadliest in recent Texas history. I remember looking at the fire and thinking that this would change my life forever. The attacks in Norway, Utah and Oslo. I remember watching it on TV in my room at a Walt Disney World Resort. It was just so strange and horrible, especially since we had gone with some of our relatives who lived in Norway. We went to Epcot the next day, and saw a large Norwegian flag, with countless flowers bouquets surrounding it, on a tiny outdoor stage near the Norway pavilion. OJ being announced innocent. Nobody knew it at the time, but all these years later it's become a where were you when OJ was innocent. It was a big day for the US justice system. The justice system doesn't see color except for green. The past few days with Trump and his bull's executive orders and the subsequent political unrest. It's very disconcerting. I'm also pretty sure that this is going to be the end of the Republican party. 
I live in a southern state, and a lot of people that I know who were screaming make America great again are starting to worry about his actions. The baby boomers are dying off, moderate republicans are swaying, the republican party better enjoy their last run, because I can't see them being voted in again. They'll either have to change their platform, or disappear into the history books and if this happens, who will succeed them? Besides 9-11 and Kennedy being shot, and watching live when Oswald was murdered, one of the things that stands out a lot was meeting a man who said he was the navigator on the photography flight that accompanied the bomber over Nagasaki. I asked him many questions over the course of several hours but the most spine chilling one was, why did they drop the second bomb? Why not wait until the Japanese had a chance to figure out what had happened and respond and he answered, because the bombs were brought over on board ship and the navy was terrified they would blow up at any second. The second bomb was dropped on Nagasaki to get rid of it, and to make the Japanese think we had an unlimited supply of them rang true. Coming home drunk from the bar at 5am, turning on the TV to CNN and hearing Bernard Shaw say we leave you with an image of a man riding his bicycle on top of the Berlin Wall. I thought that this fool was a dead man and then the camera pulled back showing throngs of people smashing and tearing the wall down. I cried my eyes out. 1. Watching the news on 9-11-2001, and watching a second plane hit the towers during a live feed. 2. Seeing Pope John Paul II live in San Francisco, in 1987. 3. Watching the Cubs win the World Series in 2016 on TV. 4. Seeing the Space Shuttle Endeavor fly over San Francisco piggybacking on a 747 as it was retired. Shock and awe. The initial bombing that started the US invasion of Iraq, I was working a night job, so, and like a mo of people I was home and watching TV at 10am, or something like that, when it began, the same stuff I was watching live is the same clip they always show now. Not so much witnessing history, but this was when I knew that either way, I was about to, last term. I was part of an early music ensemble that met in a rep opposed house across the street from the student union. We were preparing for a Christmas concert, a small group of music students singing some breathtakingly beautiful chant. As we're basking in the resonance of our combined voice, we are bathed in the glow of police lights and serenaded with shouts and jeers and horns from the protests outside at the student union. It was the night of the US election. The juxtaposition of the warmth and love in our room and the hate outside really stuck with me. It was striking to realize that whatever happened, once we left that little bubble of rehearsal, the world was going to be so much different from the last time we saw it. 2. Death of Michael Jackson 2009 3. Death of Muhammad Ali 2016 4. Trayvon Martin's murder and the release of Zimmerman. This was the contemporary landmark divide. BLM begins. 5. Space Shuttle Columbia Explosion 2003. I remember Saturday morning cartoons interrupted with this breaking news of horrifying images and people crying. 6. Malaysia Airlines Flight 370 the 8th of March 2014. Haunting story. Search officials stopped just this month. 7. The changing face of USA politics. Obama and Trump. 8. The fall and capture of BTK. 9. Mass shootings such as the Batman movie theater shootings and Sandy Hook shootings. 10. 9-11 and the rise of Islamophobia. 10. Connie 2012. I just remember waking up one morning and seeing and hearing nothing except Connie and Connie posters. Cities all over the world covered with this. I think this was my first experience with the concept of building awareness and I guess what later led to the evolution of SJW. Walking out of Union Station last Saturday and joining a giant sea of people. It was mind blowing. The march on DC and all the sister marches made history. I'm so glad I flew from FL to be a part of it. It was a life changing experience. While incredibly minor there was an get your ice cold water meme for a while and I was there for the first performance. Even funnier I got to see all the people unsuccessfully ripping him off when I went to get lunch. Election night when Trump won. Nobody thought it would happen and after he took Ohio I remember the news anchors covering the election not being sure of what to say. It was truly a shock. Just goes to show that nobody can truly predict the future, especially when it involves humans. 
9-11 on TV, and everyone in my family calling my cousin, because she had a job interview in one of those towers. She got out of the building seconds prior to the first plane. She's alive and well, got married 3 years ago, still living in the US, but nowhere near NYC. Patriots winning Super Bowl 36 was big because one of their linemen had three brothers at the World Trade Center and it was the first Super Bowl since 9-11 so it was cool to have a team called the Patriots win it. We are all Patriots. And tonight the Patriots are world champions. U2's halftime show still makes me cry when they drop the banner with all the victims names. It was also the last time there was a true Cinderella story in the NFL and launched the dynasty that still exists today as well as being the first of hopefully 5 wins by the greatest player in NFL history, at the time the youngest QB to ever win. I went to Obama's inauguration in 2009. That was pretty cool, but dang, I do not recommend that any other lifelong California natives visit DC. In January, it was 17 degrees. I stood on the steps of the Lincoln Memorial and witnessed the first black man be sworn in as President of the United States. For me, it was the Ukrainian Revolution in 2014, as well as the following annexation of Crimea. I remember staying up late watching liver streams of the flames, the riot shields, the gas masks, thinking that this was the start of something huge. Perhaps I'm uninformed. But it seems that there hasn't been much of an impact since then that would impact an average American. If you are new to the channel, you can subscribe. I publish new videos every day. Until then, check another video. for now.